What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here and in today's video I'm going to be talking about printing from Revit. So I'm going to be showing you what are the different approaches to get your files out of Revit and either to be printed or emailed and so on. So we're going to be talking about printing, exporting to PDF or images, what are some of the different approaches, what should be used in which scenario and just to understand uh, just, just the whole idea and approach when it comes to printing from Revit. Uh, now, before we get into that, I would just like to take a minute to talk about today's video's sponsor, which is PDF Element. Now, PDF Element is really important, especially in this context, because it allows you to edit your PDFs even after they have been exported from Revit or any other uh, software. So, it allows you to add uh, watermarks, text, paragraphs, objects, and much, much more to your PDFs, even though they have already been exported from the main software. Also, it allows you to convert your uh, PDFs into any other popular file format, such as Microsoft uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, or images and uh, similar. Here, for example, you can see how I can make changes to a completed PDF file that I exported from Revit. Uh, here I will remove a view on my sheet that I no longer want to include and I shall replace it with an image. Uh, we can also uh, add even more just by placing some text over that image. Also, PDF element can be used in order to uh, scan either images or image-based PDFs and turn them into selectable, editable text, which is a function I desperately needed when I was a student. It also allows for batch processing and it can be used for easy reading of large text documents because it has the search function integrated. Uh, now, if you want to learn more about uh, PDF Element, I encourage you to check out the link in the description just below the video uh, to learn more about this software. Okay, so with that out of the way and without any further ado, let's go straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So this is the project that I'm going to be using for this whole uh, explanation or presentation. This is my big office building project and the first thing that I want to show you is a quick uh, print setup. So this is something that I like to use uh, when it comes to uh, just uh, quickly printing something out or exporting something uh, just to be able to see it uh, outside of Revit. Now uh, this can either be something that you want to perhaps share with a colleague or with a client or something that you quickly print out for uh, as I said either for yourself or some sketching something or perhaps for your professor uh, colleague and so on. Uh, so for this what I like to do is actually uh, like to save my views as images. Uh, I just found this to be uh, a lot quicker than exporting uh, to PDF and it's just easy then later on to print it, just fit to whatever page you have loaded into your printer and that's it. So let me show you how that works. Uh, now I'm just going to navigate here to the floor plan view and the first thing that you have to do, something that's uh, quite necessary and that is to crop your view. So for example in this case uh, for this floor plan I don't think it's really necessary to uh, show the elevation marks. Uh, this is just something that we're quickly kind of exporting. So what I'm going to do is simply go here into properties, scroll all the way down to extents, uh, make sure to check crop view as well as crop region visible which is just going to give you that little border around your model and then you can just crop out everything that you don't need. Uh, now one quick uh, quick tip that I would give you is to turn this off. I think it's ugly to kind of keep this when you export it, uh, this uh, outline or boundary. So I just like to go, come back here to the properties, go to crop region visible and just uncheck that one. That's going to make this invisible. It still crops but it's just invisible and I think it looks a whole lot nicer. Also you can make any minor adjustments that you want. Perhaps we can kind of align these two and then break this one off to the side like that. You can do that the same thing here and so on. You obviously don't have to. I'm just kind of, I, I like it when it looks nice and kind of like that. Okay, anyways, now how do we export this to an image and then we can either print it or send it. As I said, images are far easier to send through, I don't know, like uh, Viber or WhatsApp or email or Messenger and so on. So you simply go here to File, uh, you then go to Export, 
then you go all the way down so you click on this little button at the bottom and then you go to images and animation there you have the image set up and now here we have to well make some settings the first one is output so it wants you to name the image as well as select the file location where it's going to be saved uh, now what I'm going to do in this case is just change that and I'm just going to change it to my desktop and I can say this is my floor plan there we go click save uh, now for the settings uh, first here it's the export range that basically means uh, what do we want to export and I'm just going to check current window and I'll show you the uh, selected views later on uh, now for the image size I personally found that the best option is to go to zoom to you can fit to and then choose pixels but I prefer zoom to and then 100% this will basically give you the a kind of a one-to-one -one image uh, now that just determines the size of the image but not the uh, format so the format is kind of the pixel density when you export this as an image it's exported as an image that's a bitmap so it has those little pixels and if you want it to look nice you want the format to be set to at least uh, 300 uh, here for the raster image quality that's 300 pixels per square inch if I uh, if I remember correctly now you can go as far as 600 if you want I, I think it's not necessary in most cases so I'm just going to leave it at 300 and that's pretty much it you also have some additional options here do you want to hide your reference planes do you want to hide your scope boxes your crop boundaries and so on uh, so you can change that if you want I'm just going to leave it as is click OK and that's now going to export the image and well it's actually exported right now so we don't have to worry about it it's saved on our desktop and if I just open it here off to the side let's see there we go this is our image so I can zoom in see everything as you can see it's quite clear and crisp uh, it looks as if it were uh, printed so you can you know, send this or the, perhaps print it and so on so this is kind of the quick approach that I like to use uh, in some cases now if we're taking it to the next level and we were ready to print our project and we want to print that uh, straight out of Revit or we want to save it as a PDF well in that case you would follow a different uh, approach a different method so let's explore that one so the first thing that you want to do instead of exporting the view kind of independently you want to place it on a sheet so let's see how can we create sheets you go simply here to the project browser scroll all the way down and then find our sheets here we go sheets right click go to new sheet and then you can choose the title block now you can load one in if you want I'm just going to go with this one and this is what that looks like so this is the default one that comes with Revit uh, you can change it you can load in your own uh, now one just one quick thing that I like to do or that I would like to show you is if you want to have just a blank piece of paper and you don't want to go out and create your own title block a quick way to get rid of all of this text and so on and the out of this logo you can simply select this go into edit family and then you just make a cross selection like that and you hit delete you go to load back into project and close now it's going to ask you do you want to save the changes and you want to say no because you don't want to change the original family now here you can just override the changes so the change is only made inside of your project and that's exactly what you want to have uh, moving on uh, it's time to now load in some uh, uh, some uh, views so I can just sc scroll here I uh, find our let's see where's our ground level or first level yeah let's drag over the first level place it there let's see we can perhaps find a section here so let's try section one or perhaps yeah let's go with section two I'm just going to adjust it a little bit there we go so this first view is 1 to 100 and then for some reason this section is 1 to 50 so let's change that to 1 to 100 there we go perhaps a little bit too much detail but well that's okay so uh, once you're happy with the view uh, then you can simply place this on the sheet as well uh, again I would go here to the properties and just uncheck crop region visible getting rid of that ugly you know, frame go back to our view and then we can simply place that next to our floor plan or something 
there we go so we have our section uh, also if you don't like this uh, you can either remove it by selecting the view and then as you can see uh, you can uh, resize this just like that or uh, you can select it and then move it if you want in addition you can just select it go to the properties and just go with no title and then it would have no title anyways once you're happy once you're uh, you like what you've created and it's time to print this uh, well it's, it's as simple as going here to the file menu expanding that and then let's go here uh, into print so not export you go into print even if you're just exporting a PDF you go to print so that's just something to keep in mind uh, once you're here let's go to print uh, now for the name uh, you want to uh, set this to basically the, the printer name uh, now if you're exporting to PDF you can go to Adobe PDF now if you don't have your uh, Adobe PDF here you can just find a different kind of a uh, PDF viewer uh, online and then uh, like the uh, PDF element and then you can use that here so any uh, kind of PDF reader that you have installed on your computer uh, it should show up here so you can select that I'm just going to go with this one uh, you can go to properties if you want to adjust that uh, in any way but anyways let's continue on uh, here we have the file location so again you save it on desktop for example let's hit save uh, next we have the print range and as I said I wanted to show you the selected views and sheets so you can check this and that basically allows you to batch export. So you go to select, and as you can see here, you have a, an entire list of everything included on this uh, on this project. So you have your 3D views, your elevations, your floor plans, reflected ceiling plans, renderings, and so on. So in this case, I would simply select the sheet because that's the only one that they want, but uh, feel free to select as many as you want or as many as you would like but uh, we just want one and also here you have an option to uh, just uh, save this so you save this set of sheets or set of views and then you can just reprint that in the future so for example if you're working on a project and there are several iterations and you have to print for each of those you would basically save the set and then you would just print that numerous times in the future so let's just click OK for now. I don't want to save this because this is just kind of a presentation. And finally, we have the settings. So this is most important when it comes to this print setup. Go to setup and then here you have to choose first the printer while well, it's already chosen. Then we have the name. So if you want to save this printer setup, I can rename this one into perhaps uh, A1 metric. Click OK. Uh, for the paper size, well, it's the A1 paper size. That's why we named this one A1 metric. Uh, for the source, uh, we can just leave it at the default tray. Uh, for orientation, it can be either a landscape or portal, basically meaning vertical or horizontal. This one is obviously horizontal, so let's leave it as that. Uh, moving forward, we have the vector or raster processing. So this basically means uh, is uh, are you exporting this as an image so that's like a bitmap so that means you have the, all of those pixels so that would be a raster uh, processing or you have vector processing where it's only lines so for this we can go with vector processing so it's just going to save it as sets of lines uh, now uh, the benefit of vector processing is that it does give you a smoother quality and the lines look just uh, a lot nicer so just something to keep in mind uh, finally for the zoom uh, instead of fit to page I like to zoom to 100 uh, the reason for that is simply because if you fit the to page it might make it a little bit smaller because it's going to count in the frame that you have here all the way around uh, because the the printer can't print all the way to the edge of the paper so it's just going to make everything ever so slightly smaller so that's why I go to zoom to 100 for the raster quality personally I haven't noticed any difference between low and uh, presentation so just go with whatever you want for the colors you can have colors grayscale meaning going from shades to gray shades of gray and then you have black lines making this just different thicknesses of black lines and finally we have those same options do you want to hide uh, reference planes and so on so we can check that on and we can simply click OK and now we're done with the printer setup uh, now you do have the ability to just uh, cancel out of this cl or close out of this and go to file and then go to print and here you have the print preview 
So it's just going to show you what this would look like printed. So we can just take a look. Once you're happy, click close, go back to file, print, print. Uh, just double check if everything is in order. It is, so just click OK. Uh, it says you have chosen want, want to print. Do you wish to uh, continue? And I'm just going to say yes. And it's just going to ask me again where do you want to save it. It does tend to ask you this two times. It's a little bit annoying, but there you go. Let's save it on our desktop. We can leave it at the default name. Click Save. And now it's just going to start that exporting process. Now, sometimes, uh, in my experience, it tends to kind of uh, lag a little bit, and sometimes it just stops and doesn't want to continue. So keep in mind that that is a possibility, and then you just have to try again. Uh, but anyways, uh, this is what we have in the end, and I'm quite happy with the way this looks like. Let's zoom in a little bit, and there we go. It's uh, saved as a PDF. Now, if you don't have a home printer, as I don't, you can always take it to a print shop, and then they can print it for you. So there you go. That's the entire setup. That's the kind of the easy way using an image or the hard, but the most correct and most and the highest quality way, and that is by using uh, this uh, this print to PDF uh, option or just go straight to your home printer. If you have one, that would probably be the best option. Anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, if you're interested in checking any of my courses, uh, check out my website, balkanarctic.com. Uh, if you want my project file, like this project file that we have over here, go to my Patreon page. Uh, and uh, of course, make sure to like this video, make sure to subscribe, and I'll be back in a couple of days with another Balkan Arctic tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.